The brightness of the shops where holly sprigs and berries crackled in the lamp heat of the windows made pale faces ruddy as they passed. Poulterers and grocers' trades became a splendid joke, a glorious pageant with which it was next to impossible to believe that such dull principles as bargain and sale had anything to do. The Lord Mayor in the stronghold of his mighty mansion house gave orders to his fifty cooks and butlers to keep Christmas as a Lord Mayor's household should. And even the little tailor, whom he had fined five shillings in the previous Monday for being drunk and bloodthirsty in the streets, stirred up tomorrow's pudding in his garret while his lean wife and the baby sallied out to buy the beef. The owner of one scant young nose gnawed and mumbled by the hungry cold as bones are gnawed by dogs, stooped down at Scrooge's keyhole to regale him with a Christmas carol. But at the first sound of God bless you, merry gentlemen, may nothing you dismay, Scrooge seized the ruler with such energy of action that the singer fled in terror, leaving the keyhole to the fog and even more congenial frost. Some lines from Charles Dickens, A Christmas Carol. A passage which includes a mention of the carol which Jack just played for us. But even that quotation slightly alters the words because it's not usually God bless you, but God rest you. And perhaps more fundamentally, it's not merry gentlemen or merry gentlemen, but God rest you merry gentlemen. Ian Bradley in the Daily Telegraph Book of Carols says, commas are very important to hymns. The comma is important in the opening line of this hymn. It is not, as so often thought, addressed to merry gentlemen, but rather to those who may be anxious. Indeed, its message of God's reassuring love is specifically directed at the shepherds who are frightened by the sudden appearance of an angel in their midst. The phrase, God rest ye merry, was actually a medieval term which was an expression of goodwill. In 1548, Bishop Thomas Cooper said, Be thou glad or joyful, as the vulgar people say, rest you merry. And this carol probably dates back to Tudor times, though it doesn't seem to have been written down until about 1760. So the first line is really saying, Gentlemen, may God keep you in his care. Of course, it was written before we became aware of the need for inclusive language. In fact, to the modern mind, there's quite a lot to question in this hymn. John Bell, the Scottish hymn writer and musicologist, was asked to comment on the hymn. He wasn't keen. He found three examples of exclusive language, two statements for which there is no biblical evidence, several archaisms and, Ian Bradley says, at least one piece of dubious theology. As a consequence, it never found its way into the most recent Church of Scotland hymn book. But it is a very jolly and Christmassy tune that everyone is familiar with. A tune that's called London, but which dates back to the Jacobite Rebellion and is really a very old folk tune. But it's amazing how persistent this carol and tune has been down the centuries. The words are archaic. The theology is old-fashioned and clumsy. But in some ways it still speaks to us as a Christmas hymn. It is amazing when you look how many modern musical artists have recorded versions of this carol. It features too in Merry Christmas Mr Bean when the eponymous hero ends up conducting the Salvation Army Band playing the tune. But whenever and wherever we hear it, whether in Dickens London or outside Belfast City Hall, it speaks to us of Christmas and God's love. And even in these challenging times, it brings us glad tidings of comfort and joy. And now Laura will play us out with this hymn 
played on the pipes. <laughs> Thank you.